Hi, thank you everyone for joining us today. I am Mamta Gupta, Head of Marketing across Asia Pacific for Folder. Uh, we are really excited to have uh, all of you here as part of today's session. So very quickly, I do want to introduce our two speakers. Um, we are so excited to have them both. Um, so this is part of our business leader series. We are thrilled to be joined by Teresa Abella, OpenPay's uh, Group Chief Risk and Compliance Officer. Teresa has been with OpenPay for almost three years, having honed her risk management expertise at some of the world's leading financial institutions, including Morgan Stanley, Nomura, and Commerce Bank. Monica Acre, she's VP for Asia Pacific at Forder. Monica is the Monica is the leader in e-commerce fraud prevention, protecting close to a billion consumer globally from credit card fraud, account takeover, and identity theft. Monica joined Folder in Jan 2020 and has extensive experience in the payment space, having worked at both Braintree and PayPal in prior life. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Monica, who will lead today's session. Monica, over to you. Great. Thanks, Monta, for the introduction. And Teresa, I'm so happy to be here uh, with you today. Um, I would really love for you to share a little bit more with the audience if they're not familiar with OpenPay, although um, I, I'm pretty sure most people know the name, but I'd love for you to share a little bit more about your role and what OpenPay does and um, your journey at OpenPay. Yeah, sure. Um, and thank you, Mamta, for the introduction as well. Um, so first up, look, thank you for having me today. I'm very excited to be here. Um, just to give you a bit of background about myself, um, I am the uh, Group Chief Risk and Compliance Officer uh, at OpenPay. Um, I've been here uh, at OpenPay for just over two years now. Um, previous to this, I worked in the UK. Um, what was originally meant to be a one-year working holiday um, stint turned into 15 years. Um, you know, I was very fortunate that my career did take off and I did have the opportunity to work across the financial banking industry. Um, however, I am originally from Melbourne. Uh, so, you know, I started my career um, with the big four consulting firms in the audit, transformation uh, and change space. And, you know, it kind of evolved to working in the, in the risk space. And I suppose um, the role that I have now is, is a great role because it allows me to bring all these skill sets together into one. And, um, you know, as you mentioned, OpenPay has quite a strong rep reputation in the market. It's an Australian based fintech um, that is growing fast and at pace. Um, I remember, as you know, soon after I joined, um, I was told that we were going to list. In, in three months, and, um, and, and that's quite a stretch, um, but we basically did it, um, and it goes to show how fast we move, you know, because there's a lot of prep work involved across all aspects of the organization in order to achieve something like that. I can only imagine um, how exciting, uh, maybe a bit scary that could have been, but also really rewarding um, when you when you get to the other side of it. So fantastic to see your growth and um, yeah, watch open pay, you know, expand. It's really exciting. So with your growth, I mean, we're really seeing the buy now, pay later industry just boom right now. Um, in 2020, it accounted for around 10% of all e-commerce transactions in Australia. It's, it's, we see it growing, I'm based in Singapore, we see it growing in Southeast Asia and India and other markets. Um, what do you think are the top factors that are really driving this growth in the industry? Yeah, look, thank you, Monica. It's, it's quite an interesting um, question, but I do think that the buy now, pay later solution um, offers a more flexible, a more affordable way for, for people to spread their, their payments. Um, you know, it is a fully digital experience, which is convenient and fast. Um, and it offers things such as real-time appro approval um, and ultimately a good alternative to the more traditional forms of payment like, like credit cards. And I think at the end of the day, people do want choice and they do want flexibility. Um, you know, it does enable people to purchase things that they may not otherwise approve um, and spread those payments over you know, a longer period of time. Uh, which, you know, under the sort of pressures of COVID is quite important. 
you know, from an open pay perspective, our target market is, um, you know, we focus on finance savvy consumers who are responsible borrowers, you know, who can afford major purchases, um, but need to spread that cost over time, you know, to meet their budgeting needs. And, you know, we also play in verticals um, outside of the traditional retail, such as automotive, um, healthcare, um, and auto. Um, and, um, you know, purchases in, in these verticals are often a necessity, they're not just a want. Um, and, you know, it's, that's where buy now, pay later can add a lot of value when you, for instance, have to incur like an emergency situation, like taking your vet to the, uh, taking your pet to the vet to get that operation or, you know, having your car break down and having to get that fixed. Um, you know, that's where, you know, that, that buy now, pay later solution can come in really handy. I think overall, um, buy now, pay later generally offers better terms than your traditional payment options. And, um, and we've seen strong growth, particularly in the verticals that, that, that I've covered um, and I've discussed that we play in. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think when you think of buy now, pay later, sometimes the obvious um, industries like fashion come to mind, but it makes a really, it makes a lot of sense, especially in these times uh, for those need to have or maybe surprise um, financial occurrences, occurrences to happen uh, to be able to have flexible payment options. Makes a lot of sense. And you touched on COVID-19 you know, having an impact on your business or, uh, or consumers. We've also seen it's obviously you know, really pushed e-commerce uh, in a trajectory that was much faster than what was expected. Um, what has this really meant for your business? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, Monica, you've touched on, on some of the aspects there, but I suppose COVID has really helped to expedite the digital revolution um, in all mm. aspects of our life. You know, when we think about, you know, um, remote working, homeschooling, and the same has applied to e-commerce. You know, the ongoing challenges of the lockdowns has forced us to move away from the traditional way of how we, how we did things, including in, in mm. the payment space. You know, as a result, you know, I think the buy now, pay later really appealed to people because it offers a, a fully digital experience um, mm. and offers an easy way to pay. Um, that, and as a result of that, we have seen significant growth um, mm. during this time. Um, I suppose, uh, you know, let me share some, some stats with you that come to my mind. You know, the RBA did some... Um, uh, research which, which showed that actually buy now pay later transactions grew by 55% in 2019-20, which is incredible. Um, wow. And we know from our research done by our marketing department that, you know, 40% of people use buy now pay later methods now than what the pre-pandemic, which is again a significant yeah. increase that we're seeing. You know, from our perspective, from an open pay perspective, and then in, what we did was we obviously focused on our innovation um, and we continue to enhance our products, you know, to meet that customer demand. Um, we, we also focused on diversifying our product range. So in addition to focusing on developing that buy now, pay later product, we continue to also develop our B2B solution, which is mm -hmm. targeted at, at at um, companies, right? And, um, and we call this solution OPPRO solution. And it's a service, software as a service offering that allows companies to manage their trade accounts from an end-to-end -end perspective. So it includes taking applications, the credit checks, the approvals, and the account management process all in the one. Smart, very smart. What a, um, no, that's great. I, I haven't um, thought about B, B2B, or I'm sorry, I haven't thought about BNPL much in the B2B space, but there seems to be um, great synergies there for sure. Um, shifting gears a little bit, uh, I know you are, as your role of Chief Risk and Compliance Officer, we share a, a common passion of uh, risk management. So I'd, I'd love to talk to you a little bit about um, what your, you know, what role fraud prevention plays in your go-to-market strategy or your market expansion strategy as well? Yeah, sure. Um, 
And you're right, risk is one of my passions, Monica. So thank you for highlighting that. Um, you know, but from a um, from a broad risk uh, perspective, um, broad risk is a key inherent risk in our business, um, given the nature of, of what we do with lending and payments. Therefore, you know, the way that we approach fraud prevention is absolutely critical and core to our business strategy. Mm. Um, and, and there are many reasons for this. Um, obviously, the first one is that we need to protect the firm from losses um, and theft. But more importantly uh, for us is to protect the customer um, and their wallet and to keep the bad actors out. Um, and to help us determine, you know, what our priorities are from a fraud prevention point of view, what we do and how we manage it is we, we conduct a, a fraud risk assessment, um, which helps us to understand, you know, the potential risks, the potential fraud scenarios that could happen um, across the customer journey and across our different regions and products and channels, because there are slightly mm -hmm. different challenges across all of these. And um, whilst we try and implement global frameworks and solutions, yeah, we do recognise that there are differences across the regions and we do have to apply a level of customization and solution mix per region. And I suppose, you know, one thing to highlight here is that, um, you know, what we value with the Forta solution in particular is that whilst it's a tool um, which allows us to do things in a globally consistent way, um, Forta does recognise the fact that each region has its own challenges and mm. works closely with us to address those complexities. And in particular, mm. when we're dealing with third party fraud. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. And that leads me to my next question. Um, we've obviously been working together, Forta and OpenPay have been working together for a little over a year now. And it's obviously been a great experience from our side. Um, but can you talk to you a little bit about... Um, how Forder has impacted your business and your growth aspirations? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think the first thing to say about um, your question is the fact that I view the partnership equally as important as, as on both sides. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and we do need to recognize that Forter is a machine learning solution, which is exciting and innovative. Um, but it's really important that from an open pay side that our fraud risk investigators are continuously providing that feedback into the Forta system, which then helps uh, Forta optimize uh, the solution to help us mitigate fraud across the board. And you know, this needs to be an ongoing process um, you know, to help us keep on top of the, you know, the existing, but the emerging schemes as well that we face. You know, overall, I, I find that the, um, I found that the global partnership has worked really well and the border solution has helped us stay on top of our fraud and mm -hmm. obviously um, on top of our losses as well and the protection of our customer. You know, and obviously I look forward to um, working together in the future and, and stre strengthening that relationship. Thanks so much for that. I really um, love that point you made that it is a two way street. Like, uh, we really feel that the, the most um, successful partnerships um, are ones that are, you know, we're giving feedback both ways and improving together. So that's, that's fantastic that you pulled that out. All right, let's, let's look forward. You know, what are your big bets for the remainder of this year and, and beyond, maybe in 2022 as well? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think there are three main areas um, from an open pay perspective that we're, we're really focusing on as a business. Um, the first one is that, you know, we will continue to grow in our existing verticals across health, home improvement and auto um, and retail. Um, and also our newer ones, which are, which are um, education and membership as well. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing um, a big sort of uptake in those verticals as well. So that's the first one. Um, the second area that we are um, focusing on is really growing our partnerships across the globe um, to support the wholesale distribution of our product. And that really helps us to grow our merchant and consumer base at scale and at pace. 
Mm. And lastly, um, I suppose um, we can we will continue to focus on product innovation. Mm. Um, you know, across our different customer types, across our different regions, channels, and products, because we are a diversified product offering. Um, and I suppose there are two sort of two sort of areas uh, that I'm particularly involved in. Um, so the the first one is focusing on seamless automation across all aspects of the of the customer journey. So making sure that you now what we deliver to the customer is frictionless, flexible, fast, and um, from my perspective, uh, secure. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I see solutions um, that offer the artificial intelligence like Forta definitely having a key part to play in that journey. Um, and the second thing um, that we're focusing on is um, you know, really strengthening our credit decisioning capabilities to ensure that we are lending to the right people, you know, which really yeah. supports our commitment uh, as an organization to ensure that we are delivering a responsible product. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Thanks for sharing that. Um, that was our last prepared question, but um, we wanted to open up now um, with the last minutes to audience questions. Um, if you have any audience members, if you have any questions, feel free to um, put those in the chat window. Um, you can do those anonymously, or you can do those. Um, um, you know, you can just put it in the chat window non-anonymously as well. Uh, but we have a few questions that people sent in before the, the session, so I'd like to ask those first. Um, number one, how are you investing in your teams to keep them engaged and to help them adapt to such a very dynamic environment? Yeah, sure, and I think that's a good question. Um, so thank you, Monica. Um, so look, fundamentally, I think that it starts with strong leadership and trust. Um, you know, as leaders, we have to live and breathe our culture, our organizational culture, and really lead by example. So um, for me, it's about uh, team collaboration, transparency, integrity, and, and innovation. You know, um, as a leader, um, you know, I really focus on empowering and, and, and trusting uh, my people and really giving them that next challenge around, you know, giving them that opportunity to grow um, but also letting them know it's all right to reach out and ask questions and, 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 and get that guidance where, where you need to. Um, you know, at, at OpenPay, I think another sort of um, another positive and um, initiative that's ha happened that's really helped this space is that we do have a, a dedicated learning and development specialist that mm. I work very closely with to, um, to plan out like the soft skill development program for our staff, which I feel is just as important as the technical subject matter. And yeah. um, what, what I do with um, the learning and development officer, who's fantastic, her name's Chami, um, is you know, in addition to planning out a, a program for the actual team, also thinking about the individual and how I can develop each individual in my team. You know, that makes a lot of sense. And I think in a year where we've been in and out of lockdowns and sometimes it can feel like we're stagnating as just in our personal life. Um, at least that's, you know, that's something I've felt here in Singapore um, to be able to develop your skills, other skills and to have some your company invest in you in that way, I think is a great way to see progress, even in, in a time like this when we're kind of in and out of these lockdowns and, uh, and uh, you know, not seeing a lot of change otherwise. Okay, another question that came in beforehand. You touched on this a bit in, uh, you know, I think you touched on this quite a bit in your, um, in the previous questions, but uh, I'll ask it anyway. So BNPL is becoming quite competitive. How do you ensure you stay competitive and continue to gain market share? Yeah, and you're right. It, it is a very competitive market. Um, but I suppose at OpenPay, um, there are a number of things that we do to um, keep on top of this. Um, and I think that the first thing which is really important is that we have a very clear strategy around, you know, where we want to be placed in the market. Um, and, you know, we, we, we focus on the higher value, longer term and more customized plans across yeah. the verticals, which I, which I touched on. So auto health, home improvement and retail. 
Um, mm. But beyond that, I think in order to remain competitive, you really need to be agile and you really need to hear what your customers are telling you and respond to that in a very efficient and um, effective way to meet their demands. Um, I suppose, uh, you know, at OpenPay, and another key point that helps us in achieving this is we do have a global uh, strategy office. Um, you know, that helps us to ensure that our product continues to remain effective and relevant to our customer base, you know, if not ahead of our competitors as well. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for that. All right, we're going to just do one. We have time for one more question before we need to wrap up. Um, if you are still putting questions in the chat box, that's okay. We'll try to follow up afterwards um, to respond to any of your questions. Um, but for now, last question and an important one for all the women in our audience today, what advice would you provide them to be successful? Yeah, good question, Monica. Um, look, I think um, in my mind, there are two sort of key, key things that I've learned in my journey, my career journey. Um, the first thing is, you know, never assume that somebody can read your mind, you know, mm. especially as a woman, uh, put your ideas forward and in a, in a clear, constructive and polite way, of course. Um, and then um, the second thing, which, which I've learned as well is, you know, I was always a, a, a true believer of the fact that your, your work should speak for itself. If you do good work, mm. you know, your, your, your career is taken care of. And whilst that point is still important, I don't think that's enough. Mm. You know, I think that you have to um, couple that with strong networking capability. So, you know, mm -hmm. connections within your organization, outside the organization, and you need to continue doing that across the entire sort of course of your career. That's such great advice, really tactical advice. And, uh, you know, if, if you're, you have to advocate for yourself. So I've, I've had a mentor tell me that multiple times. So I love that advice. Thanks so much for that. Okay, we are out of time. Teresa, this was um, a great session, um, learned a lot about you, learned a lot about open pay. So thanks so much for taking the time on your busy schedule and love to see, you know, female leaders like you really uh, in the industry, really um, doing new things and innovating. So thanks so much for, for taking the time today. No, thank you, Monica. It's been a pleasure. Great. To the audience members, we'll send out the recording afterwards. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to email Mamta or find us on LinkedIn. Thanks so much.